Welcome back, guys, to the great Ace Attorney Adventures. The last episode, after talking to Mr. and Mrs. Garadev after having revealed their secret, we learned that they may have not seen anything of the stabbing that took place outside their window as time ran out on our day, with Sholmes prompting us to head to meet with our potential defendant in prison to make the decision on if to take up his case. Now officially having decided to be Sosuke Natsume's counsel, we move into the trial to defend him. Well, I never expected this. Who'd have thought we'd be back here again so soon? We are on a study tour of Great Britain, with the intention of learning the country's legal practices. In order to research the latest court procedures here, we need as much court experience as possible. Well, yes, I suppose that's true, but... For the person in the dock, it may well be his or her one and only time in court, and it could be life-changing. In which case, treating it as research may seem a little... crass. Oh, when you put it like that, you're quite right. Good morning! It's a strong one, but one with such red bloodshot eyes. Ah, Mr. Natsume, good morning. Oh dear, are you alright? Your eyes are terribly bloodshot. The early bird catches the worm, as they say here in Britain. Yes, I've heard that expression. But I really don't want to catch a worm. So I tried desperately not to wake up early, but I'm so worried I could catch a wink. And now I'm absolutely exhausted as a result. Do all literary people take things so literally? Thank you for putting your faith in us today, Mr. Natsume. I... I wish I had my life. My whole future hangs in the balance. I'm... Too terrified to tremble. Really? Because I can feel tremors in the floor. I can't do this. I can't take it. Although, locum student Mr. Narahodo Esquire... Uh, yes? I caught a glimpse of the public gallery as I walked by the courtroom. It looked like the opening night of the opera. There were so many people. I had no idea my case was such a notorious affair here in London. Oh, um... Neither did I. Do you know where that might be, Mr. Sato? I'm sorry, Mr. Narahodo, but I have no idea. So that all-knowing look on your face is just coincidence then, is it? Don't hide the truth from me! It's... it's... it's because of the Reaper, isn't it? Lord Van Zeeks? I is that right, Mr. Sado? I purchased as many different p newspapers as I could find this morning, and yes. Lord Van Zeeks is on the front page of every one. I... I knew it! Sometime after the prosecutor was dubbed the Reaper of the Bailey, he stopped appearing in court, it seems. It's been several years now, in fact, until the day before yesterday. Yes, Inspector Gregson told us something similar, didn't he? The trial two days ago marked Lord Van Zeke's return to the courtroom after a very long hiatus. The trial of Magnus McGilded. Oh, what a harrowing experience that was. I believe that appearance made even greater waves here in the capital than today's. Well, we wouldn't have realized, of course, having only just arrived in the country. Why is the Reaper back in the Bailey so soon, for what appears to be a mundane murder? That's the question the papers are asking, and they are all speculating various answers. Mundane? Mundane? It's the most significant saga of the century to some of us. Oh dear, I meant no offense, Mr. Natsume, but that is how the papers are describing it. Well, lest we also forget the fact that it could spark an international incident. Obviously, the reappearance of this infamous prosecutor has caught people's attention. But there's another blatant similarity with the trial of two days ago. Yes, I agree. Locum student Mr. Narahodo Esquire, it's you. Me? Well, I suppose that's true. Both times it is you who stands against this legendary prosecutor. It... it can only mean that you're friends with the Reaper. Please, I don't rub shoulders with... with... Deathbringers? I'm afraid that there's really only one other explanation. It can only be another example, Mr. Narahodo, of your uncommon bad luck. Thanks for that. Oh, this is just my luck! Why am I so represented by a man with such frail fortune? By the least lucky lawyer alive! Well, let's not forget that it was you, Mr. Nasume, who asked me to represent you. 
Yes, it's true that I'm just a student new to London with little in the way of experience or skills or luck. But I promise you this. I will fight your corner until the bitter end. And I will believe in you, Mr. Natsume. Oh, benevolent locum student, Mr. Nalhodo Esquire. You're not alone here with us, Mr. Natsume. Whatever happens, we will always be on your side. Oh, benevolent non locum assistant, Miss Mikotoba Esquire S. I am in your debt forever. I shall never forget this great kindness for as long as I live. Mr. Natsume, counsel for the defense. The court session is about to begin. Kindly make your way into the courtroom at once. All right then, Mr. Natsume. It's time. Let's go. Yes! Yes. We will. This is it. My second appearance in a British courtroom. And my second trial against the Reaper. I hope you're watching over me, Kazuma. Because this time, I won't let my faith waver. I'll believe in my client to the last. Just like you believed in me. I believe I can do this for now. I'm ready for this fight. I was just ran in there going, I've never been in a British courtroom. I was just wondering, will I ever be called up for like any duties or anything? Doubtful. I guess I don't really want to. 20th February at 10 a.m. The Old Bailey Courtroom. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I now call upon the counsels of the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is fully prepared, my lord. The defense is ready, my lord. The Nipponese are a truly fascinating breed. Sorry, what? Lord Strongheart has told me all about you. That you are a student who arrived in London but two days ago, a mere amateur. D do you have a point? Being a compatriot, you feel compelled to try to help the accused, I suppose. Typical Nipponese arrogance. Forgive me, but I do not believe arrogance is an appropriate description. This is Alison. After all, at our previous encounter, the defendant was found to be innocent. Oh, he's on the booze already. Didn't like that. Very true. And a most fascinating, if dark, trial it was too. The tragic conclusion came later, of course. It's the acquitted and his unfortunate violent end. <laughs> oh, what do you want to seem like the most suspicious guy around? Why? In a courtroom, nonetheless. Thank you, counsels. I see both sides are in fine fettle. And now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, are you ready to carry out your duties here in court as impartial members of the public? What? You never know when you might be down on your luck, but I believe in fair play for everyone. Well, I must warn you, I'm rather more ruthless than I appear. Oh well, not me. What you see is what you get. I'm a peace-loving fellow. What? I'm afraid to say, I think it's quite possible that Mustache Foreigner did the deed. Come on, what are you waiting for? No doubt he did it anyway. Eh, sorry, didn't quite catch that. Very well. Let us proceed. Your opening statement, if you please, Lord Van Zeex. Very recently, Great Britain signed an alliance with a rising power in the Far East. The accused and the doctor today is a student from that same land, a certain Mr. Sosuke Natsume. And while our country has extended this foreign student the warmest of welcomes, regrettably, the kindness has not been returned. In fact, this student is accused of a most sinister act. Of plunging a knife into the back of an innocent woman who was doing nothing but walking down the street. A knife crime! I tell you from bitter experience, those are the worst. Bloody oaf they are! Just look at that sallow complexion and short stature. He, he's one of those dreadful Japanese. Come on, let's get this over with. With me now, everyone. One, two, three. Eh, sorry, didn't quite catch that. 
Pray, forgive the discourtesy of smashing my hollow chalice here in this great chamber. Allow me to call the first witness to the stand. Very well. Bailiff, lead the inspector in, please. Your name and occupation, please. Yes, sir. Tobias Gregson, Detective Inspector of Scotland Yard. Would you please summarize the events of the case for the court, Inspector? The victim is thought to be a young woman in her twenties by the name of Olive Green. I beg your pardon, Inspector. For to me. Yes. Having been stabbed in the back by an attacker's knife, the victim fell unconscious. That was three days ago now. She's been comatose ever since. What? So they don't even know who she is for sure? Hmm. Comatose, I see. But her life is not in danger. Fortunately for the Eastern student, the charge will not be murder. Pray, elaborate on the details, Inspector. Sir, if I could ask everyone to look at this street map. Did I ever look at it? Well, first time for everything. As I mentioned, the incident took place three days ago at around five in the afternoon. It happened on the pavement running alongside Briar Road, a wide thoroughfare for horse-drawn vehicles. It had not long since stopped snowing as the victim, Miss Green, was walking down the street. Out of the blue, she was approached from behind by the accused and stabbed in the back. Luckily, the young lady's life was spared and she's currently being treated in one of the city's hospitals. But being unconscious as she is, we've been unable to take a statement from her, of course. This is the case file with everything we know about the victim so far. Thank you, Inspector. The court will accept the documents as evidence, if you please. The case file has been entered in the court record. Let's pause here a second to say, do I not get any choice in the jurors in the fact that, like, we have Bruce Fairplay up there, who we, of course, have had a negative experience with in the past. We might, might not really be up for being on our side in any way, shape, or form. Or just, you know, not really necessarily on our side, but impartial. Plus... Someone who lived with the defendant, essentially, as well? This is all a bit... weird. I know, like, jury stuff should is somewhat random, but still. A file containing an overview of the case and details about the victim. She was found with a knife in her back and is currently in hospital yet to regain consciousness. The case file is obtained. What of the weapon that was used? Sir, I have that here. It was removed from the victim's back. Ouch, that big thing is starting to make me scared to walk down the street now. With a heavy blade like that, almost anybody would have been able to stab the poor woman. Even the scragged looking soseki san I suppose. Hmm, a common or garden jackknife, I would say. Rather nondescript. Thank you, Inspector. The court accepts the blade as evidence. The jackknife has been entered into the court record. Now then, what do we know of the motive? Money or valuables, I presume? What we can tell by looking at the woman's possessions, it seems like she's a poor student herself. Hard to imagine she would have had anything much worth pinching, my lord. I see. Well, in that case, are we looking at some deep-seated resentment toward the victim? I'm afraid I couldn't say. Apart from visiting second-hand bookshops, the defendant, Miss Anasame, doesn't appear to get out much. At this moment in time, we haven't been able to establish any sort of connection between him and the victim. Yes! If theft and grievance had been ruled out as the motive, what reason could Mr. Nasume possibly have had for stabbing the young woman? Yet you arrested the man in spite of that, in a totally unjustified and heavy-handed way. Objection! Okay then. Pray forgive the discourtesy of flinging a freshly uncorked bottle into the public gallery. Yeah, that could have injured someone. But your words have soured its hallowed bouquet. What is you, my learned friend, who is being heavy-handed here? What? Scotland Yard does not arrest people without good cause. That should be beyond question. Inspector Gregson, the prosecution calls for your formal testimony. Explain to the court precisely why the constabulary came to arrest the Nipponese student. Yes, sir! Is that in testimony form? It is indeed.
Mr. Natsume's arrest. As I said, it was five o'clock in the afternoon when the incident occurred, and there was an unusually light fog. Visibility was reasonably good, and there was no one else about but the victim and the accused. Out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind and subsequently collapsed on the pavement. The accused ran off, scattering his belongings all over the floor. Those being a number of old books he'd just bought. He was on his way home from a bookshop, it seems. It was just a matter of working out who the books belonged to, and we found the bloke to arrest him. Old books, you say? Yes, my lord. I have a photograph here of the scene of the crime, taken immediately after the incident. Ah, yes. I can clearly see the books to which you were referring. I will take that photographic print as evidence, please, Inspector. The crime scene photograph has been entered into the court record. You Nipponese are a spineless breed, too cowardly to admit defeat. Denying everything despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Well, I... Forgive me, Lord Van Zeeks, but the defendant is not denying everything, as you put it. What are you doing, Mr. Zado? Do go on. Mr. Natsume has admitted to playing some part in the incident. Isn't that right, Mr. Nalahodo? Well, now you mention it. When we visited him in the prison yesterday, he did tell us what had all happened. As I was walking along that accursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another enemy. A woman wearing a green overcoat she was, and as I went to overtake her, she suddenly let out a little scream and collapsed onto the cold, hard slabs of stone at my feet. I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran as fast as my legs would carry me back to my accursed lodgings. Hmm. A green overcoat. Well, that's exactly what the woman in that print is wearing. Oh my. A photographic print in full color. What would the world come up with next? The defendant has done nothing more than admit he fled the scene of a terrifying incident. That does not mean that he's guilty of the heinous crime of stabbing the woman in the back. There was nobody else there at the time. Just the two of them, the victim, and the accused. In other words, there is nobody else who could possibly have stabbed the woman. A fact that the accused concedes. Ah. Hmm. It seems this cross examination could prove to be pivotal, counsel. Pivotal. Proceed, please. Yes, my lord. Nothing for it. I have to use this cross examination to turn the tables here. It's our only chance. Well, usually, if it's an inspector on the stand, we are looking to gather information. So let's press about Mr. Natsume's arrest. As I said, it was five o'clock in the afternoon when the incident occurred. There was an unusually light fog. Hold it! A light fog, you say? Well, light for London. You can see the opposite side of the street for once. Not much farther, though. That's light, is it? Around these parts, yes. Not something I'd expect a Japanese fellow yourself to know, of course. I read that London is famous for its fog, but in my country, people usually imagine that gives the city a rather beautiful appearance. How quaint. Yes, well, it's not something as London's tend to romanticize, I expect you can appreciate. I... I see. At this time of year, the fog causes a large number of accidents, especially when it's heavy. Sometimes you can't even see your own hand at the end of your arm. Indeed. The other day I was vain and only travelled by horses before I could see the carriage they were pulling. Ah, so that son and I should definitely remember to stop, look and listen. However, on the day that concerns us, the fog was somewhat lighter than usual. A fact no doubt lamented by the accused. Visibility was reasonably good and there was no one else about but the victim and the accused. How were you able to state that with any certainty? Quite simply, my learned friend. Because that is what the witnesses to this crime have told us. Ah yes, Inspector Gregson mentioned the witnesses yesterday, didn't he? That's right. One of them is a policeman, I believe, from Scotland Yard. That's correct, ma'am. 
And we must hear their testimony. The prosecution will, of course, call them to the stand, should it be necessary. But wait a minute. At five o'clock in the afternoon, in the middle of winter, it would have been dark already. No matter how light the fog might have been, no one could have seen. I'm unaware of the situation on your tiny island in the east. But here in the capital city of Great Britain, all main roads were illuminated in the night by gas streetlights. Ah! The prosecution believes there would have been ample light by which to witness the crime. Quite. Here in London, for the first time in history, the mankind has completely conquered the darkness. Which means we really need to hear those witness statements. If I could just get through the fog of this cross-examination, maybe we'll be able to... It seems the counsel for the defense is taking stock. Continue with your testimony, Inspector. Out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind and subsequently collapsed on the pavement. Hold it! From behind, you say? That's right. As you can see from this print. Yes, quite so, Inspector. The handle of the weapon is clearly protruding from the victim's back. And you say this poor woman, the screen remains in uh, critical condition, comatose no less? I'm afraid so, my lord. Yes, she's being treated, but... I was hopeful that she'd come round before the trial starts so I could take a statement, but it wasn't to be. Yes, that is indeed a pity. It would have been most illuminating to hear the victim's own account of events. Luck is on your client's side, it seems. On the contrary, my client has been exceedingly unlucky. Your force of tone is seriously undermined by those disturbingly wide eyes, I'm afraid. Ugh. The accused ran off, scattering his belongings all over the floor. Hold it! This anatomy's belongings? Um... I think you'll find this all there in the photographic print of the crime scene. Yes, the three books on the floor. That's right, my lord. Second-hand books they were. Irreparably damaged after falling in the snow, of course. The accused could easily have carried all three books in one hand. Which means... His other hand would have been free to wield a knife, for example. He's very clever, isn't he? What do you mean? He's made it extremely hard for you to assert that Mr. Nasume had his hands full with his books. He's managed to close the one avenue of escape we might have had before we even knew it was there. You mean to say that the defendant was holding his belongings as he thrust the knife into the woman's back? That must be what happened, my lord. Yes. There must be a number of old books he just bought. He's on his way home from the bookshop, it seems. Hold it! The defendant apparently visits the second-hand bookshop on a daily basis. Yes, so I understand. A shop full of old English literature. I commend the accused on the lofty subject matter of his scholarly intention. The boat's room is stacked floor to ceiling with those musty old books. Can you tell us more about the bookshop in question, please, Inspector? Well, if I must, I'll have to ask you to look at the street map again, I'm afraid. The closest second-hand bookshop to the accused lodgings is this place here, Bob and Books. A little place on the corner of Bria Road and Meersham Street. As it happens, the accused is currently living in lodgings on the other side of Bria Road at the opposite end. Which means it doesn't take a genius to work out the route you would have taken home. I mean, why is he crossing the road at the end? I propose he crossed the road on the other side. Something like this. A local map's information has now been updated in the court record. Yes, I can curve your conclusion, Inspector. The defendant would certainly have passed the scene of the crime on the way home from that particular shop. Is it not a hodo? I think that what the Inspector just told us could turn out to be of vital importance. Oh? Yes, I agree. The most important point that the Inspector just made being... The bookshop's location, the bookshop's name, or the bookshop's stock. Well, I think we should take stock. What do we have?
The bookshop's name is Bourbon Books. We have a receipt from your books. There we go. The sum of two shillings ten in a receipt of the picture of Monsieur Lecoq. A meal for a uh, Gabriel and a Canterbury yearning, eh? Interesting receipt. Gives us a time as well. Time, date, will the date be a thing? Uh oh. Does this have a date on it? Let's read the incident report. Details. Young woman rendered unconscious following a stab wound to the back. Olive Green. Female. Stout build. Early 20s. Is the victim. Location. Pavement of Bria Road. East side. Report of the... Well, reporting officer was Roly Beat. Additional notes. The victim remains unconscious. Her name was gleaned from her personal effects. Other details are unknown. So you don't exactly know who she is, but her name was gleaned from personal effects. What? Apart from the single stab wound from the large knife, no other signs of injury were observed. The assailant has seen, was seen running away by the reporting officer and was successfully arrested the following day. I guess we should look at the knife a little bit more, but we've got what we need here. The bookshop's name. Inspector Gregson, may I ask you a favor? What? Would you kindly add the name of the bookshop to your formal testimony, please? I believe it may be of vital importance. Maybe. Oh, well, you know, I mean, yes, it could be a very important clue. Very well. Not that I can see it being of any great significance. And please revise your testimony accordingly, Inspector. Yes, sir, my lord. Whatever you say. Could the man be any more sardonic? He was on his way home from Bourbon Books, the second-hand bookshop he apparently patronizes. Well, that just gives me my pure in, doesn't it? Let's give in this as a present. Objection. Um, if, if I could just stop you there, Inspector Gregson. What is it, sunshine? I'm a busy man, you know. This is the receipt that we found in Mr. Natsume's room. It was issued on the day of the incident and details the purchase of free second-hand books. And you found that in the accused room, did you? Yes, but the point is not where the receipt was found, but the name of the shop printed on it. And go on. This receipt was issued from a bookshop called Your Books. Your Books? Your Y-O-R-E, I presume. Yes, my lord. So, Miss Anatome did indeed purchase a number of books at a second-hand bookshop that day. However, the bookshop in question was not Bourbon Books. Eh? What? Inspector, do you know of this other bookshop? Uh, yes, sir. Your books is another second-hand bookshop not far from Bourbon Books. I'm doing the old man voice. Yes, sir. Your books is another second-hand bookshop not far from Bourbon Books. Better. It's just that... Well, it's such a small place, I, I didn't think the accused would have known about it. Objection! But in fact, that is the bookshop which the defendant visited on the day in question. And this receipt proves it. Objection! Yes, for what difference it makes. Wherever the man purchases musty tomes, it makes no difference in the final analysis. Objection! I disagree. I, I mean, after all, um... I have the street map here, if that might be of help. Oh, um, yes, thank you. Have a look at this, please. Is your books marked? If the defendant had been returning from Bourbon Books, then yes, he would almost certainly have passed the place where Miss Green was attacked. However, if we take into account the fact that he was actually at another bookshop, your books, it may very well turn out that he wouldn't have passed that location at all. Could that be true? My, my. It rather depends on where this other bookshop is, but I do declare it may be a possibility. Is that right, Mr. Lawyer, sir? What you just said? Absolutely. It absolutely could be right. Inspector Gregson, where is this your book's establishment? Well, um, obviously we looked into that. It turns out that your book's... It's just here on the next corner of Mirstrom Street going east. Ah. Ah. 
What an annoying position. So we could go, you could have walked top down, or you could have walked down, then left. Arguably, the route from the top is shorter? Because of the slight moving away down Calab whatever street. Calabash Road. And there you have it, as you can clearly see now. Yeah, you can't, can you? We're screwed. Oh. Oh. Yeah. You pulled me one too. My learned Nipponu's friend is obviously in training to be a clown the way he regals us with such witticisms. Your future career in the circus. Ah. You put that glass down now or I'll put you put it down for you. Yes, is that a takedown? I um didn't think I need to spell it out, but here we go. If the accused was coming in from your books instead of Borven books, there's no doubt he still would have passed the place where the victim was stabbed. Yes, thank you, Inspector. Ugh. Allow me to read it for my learned, if somewhat slow, Nipponese friend. Wherever the man purchased his musty tomes, it makes no difference in the final analysis. Well... That little Fred didn't go where we really wanted it to go, did it? Didn't take us away from it, didn't really help us out at all. But maybe there's something else in there. We'll just have to keep... poking, I guess. So... With another episode... Done. With the Great Ace Attorney, with our first stint of trial to defend Soseki Natsume completes. Things don't look that great right now. But we'll make a turnabout, I'm sure. Next time! I'll see you guys then for more. Bye bye